Welcome back everyone. So today I'm going to do a little tutorial on how to remove the stereo from your Miata. So um, we got to do a couple of things first. This car has been sleeping since um, like October. It's now late March and we need to reconnect the battery so I can move the car. So I'm going to grab me a 10 millimeter socket. Here's my 10 with maybe an extension. Just in case I uh, accidentally weld this extension to the chassis because that's something that can happen. Gonna, this has been disconnected uh, since October. So what are we doing? Well, hopefully starting it up. Here we go. Here we go. First pull. Let we'll the engine idle for a little bit. I need to pull my stereo out um, for some refresh work. Since I started restoring stereos for folks all over the world. <laughs> Um, which is currently U.S. and Canada so far. But since I started doing these, um, I've changed a few processes along the way. Come up with better fixes for certain problems. So my stereo is the first one I've ever done, and I've done about 38 since. So I need to go back to unit number one, make a few changes, fix a few things that are broken, and uh, should be good to go. So uh, wish me luck. <laughs> Getting the stereo out of this car is a pain in the ass. I've done it more times than I care to remember. There's a few things that you need though before you start. You're gonna need um, a, uh, a hook tool. They sell these at Harbor Freight. They come in with bright orange handles and you just need like, a, it looks like a hook like that, like a crook. And you're going to need some, uh, I use parachute cord, um, but uh, I, I suggest parachute cord or an old shoelace to get the eyeball vents out. You're going to need a number two Phillips head screwdriver to get the center console out. You're going to want to put something on the gear shift lever. because You're going to be taking the knob off. And you're going to want to put something in its place that's soft. Because what you're going to end up doing is you might end up scratching the bottom uh, of your body sonic amplifier. We're also going to pull, if I can get to it tonight, I'm going to pull out the cigarette lighter. I have a brand new one for it. Factory Fresh from Mazda. Uh, my cigarette lighter socket is broken. Don't know how, but it's broken. All right. What you want to do is take some parachute cord and keep this around just for this reason. I'm going to take our little hook tool. It's easy to do this two-handed, but it can be done one-handed. If these have never been taken out before, it's much harder. But the more you take them out, the easier it gets. Um, let me, uh, here, let's do this. Let's get a hook going. Then you just reach in there with your little hook tool. And there you go. Just like that. And don't be shy. You're not going to break anything. And if you do, well... Too bad. There we go. Nice firm yank. These are replacements. These are not original. These are factory though. Um, these are for the, the later NA, I believe. Possibly NB. Um, you can tell them apart because the original ones on the NAs have a longer um, bump on the front. But my originals would no longer maintain position no matter what so out they come 
you can pull the battery if you do this. It's not a bad idea. I'm not going to because I don't think I need to. I'm not doing anything with the vehicle's wiring. We're just unplugging some harnesses, so. But the, uh, the uh, service manuals will always tell you to pull the battery and all that. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. But like I said, I'm, I've done this a hundred times. So I'm not worried about it. It's an unnerving thing to do, um, pulling these out, because you think you're going to break them. <laughs> But they don't break. Now the next thing you want to do is we'll take out the screws from above here. We'll just go ahead and pull the shifter. This car is on a hill. Um, so you want to make sure your brake is firmly applied. Oh, I have the aftermarket um, IL Motorsports console, um, but it's very similar to the, uh, the factory one. So we're gonna just take everything out of it, dump it on the floor. And take these screws out. That's gonna come off, the, the gas one only. And then, um, the rest of it's all screws. We are gonna pull the glove box. We're gonna pull the glove box out. And that makes it a little bit easier uh, to get your hand back in there, uh, to get the, 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 mainly the body sonic connector is the hardest one to get to. So when I get this off, let's uh, go grab a screwdriver. Okay, this is an important step to get the console out. And the OEM one is similar to this. Um, you have to lift it up to clear the tombstone. And then you're going to bump it forward a little bit to clear the, uh, these levers. And then you should be careful not to scratch your stereo. Now this is where if you have power windows, you're gonna to wanna to unplug your power window switch. Right under there. Now's a good time to go ahead and just pull your glove box out. And that could be achieved. There's only a couple of screws holding it in. Two to be in fact. Two to be clear. And uh, there's one there, one over there. If anybody knows of a company that does flocking, um, let me know. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something with this. I was thinking of actually relining it with felt. Haven't really decided yet. So, I mean, it's a glove box. Who cares? But I do. So we'll put that someplace safe where it won't get scratched. Over here is fine. I'm going to have this thing apart for a little while. So the car has to remain movable, and it will. So. All right. Now we got to pull the tombstone. I'm gonna take the insulation out of here, put that on the floor. We're gonna draw the uh, stick shift lever back. There's one screw there. So we'll pull that screw out. Now, unfortunately, a lot of tombstones get broken in this process. Um, it's just a matter of time before it does. And you just gotta be careful. You just gotta be careful. There's that one. And this one. Now, if you're gonna do all this work, is one recommendation I have. If you're going to do all this work and go through this hassle, it's a good time to replace your HVAC control background. Now, you can, this is a brand new background. This whole panel cover is all brand new from the factory, from Mazda. If you're going to pull your stereo out, it is only 
30 35 dollars extra to buy this from mazda while you still can and i emphasize while you still can <laughs> they still sell them and um and they're readily available um also it's a good time to do your shifter uh um, accordion because taking all this apart again just for that is not something anybody wants to do um, these aren't particularly difficult tasks but it's extra work that you can avoid later down down the road um, these often get cracked discolored yellowed while you're working on your dash you might as well just replace it and it's not that much extra work once you you've dug this far in so my clips are pretty worn so this just pops right off for me yours may be different so just don't forget the hidden screws up here above the eyeball vents now we got to disconnect the um the headlight uh button and the uh hazards Right, at this point, we're going to take out these four screws that hold the stereo brackets in place, and we're going to slide the unit forward or back. Um, getting to the connectors, that's the hard part. There's not enough cable back there to pull the stereo out. So again, we're going to put some rags or something on this just to protect the stereo, and we're going to do what we can. Now, this is the part where things get hairy, especially during reassembly. The only way to get to the connectors is to reach behind the stereo and fumble for them. This I hate. Um, and figure out where the buttons are. I got the body sonic harness out. There's that one. And then I gotta reach back to the other side and you will cut yourself. I promise. So I've got the radio pulled out. This is why we cover the shifter knob or the shifter post. This is how you scratch. Your, I got a lot of these that come in, by the way, that have scratches right where you think they are. And uh, I'm going to reach on the other side and pull that connector harness out, too. Not fun. Okay. Stereo is now liberated from the dash. This is what it looks like. Now, these connectors, as I understand it, they have to be mounted or placed right where you see them. I don't think you know when i reassemble it i think i'm going to try putting it in this way see if i get the same result but don't forget you your body your body heart body harness your body sonic connectors right there that's specific to this car don't mind a little bit of surface rust on that that's just normal um doesn't mean your car was in a flood that just means it was exposed to moisture which is normal but that's the uh, the dash hole. Now, cigarette lighter, I've never done before. Uh, we're gonna learn how to do that right now. I gotta pull this cover off. Imagine that, it's a steel cover. This car is built like a 1980s Buick. In some ways, it, sh it shocks me, it really does. And the, uh, the way this thing is built, it's just, why they used a heavy steel cover here, I'll never understand. But they did. And that's that. That was their... That was Mazda's choice. Anyway, so pull this down. And we're gonna... We reach out behind here and unplug that. That actually wasn't so bad. I just put some pressure behind it and it just slipped right out. And this little plastic ring is also part of the kit. So we'll put a new one of those in. Up the, where's my pick? Ah, crap. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Um, just take your screwdriver, I took a flat blade screwdriver and I just kinda, picked at one of these um just kind of picked one of these out and it started to come undone with the ring and everything and then the ring just goes back in there 
sure to line up the notches. Then we're going to take our new plastic ring and stick it in there too. Oh, there we go. I see how that goes in. All right. Okay, I got gotcha. you. You know, the funny thing is, well, the surprising thing is that uh, the cigarette lighter does not illuminate like so many other Japanese cars of this era. The lighter doesn't illuminate. You think it would, but it doesn't. So if you're expecting to find a bulb back there, well, keep looking because you won't find one. Now this is keyed to go in only one way. And it's, yeah, there's the key right there. Okay. Ah, it's in. Make sure you remember to plug it in first. Let's test it out. This, this car, the ignition has to be on for that to work. Let's, let's make it, let's make it so. There we go. Come on. Unless the battery's dead. Oh, wouldn't that be? Oh, there it goes. There we go. Look at that. Mmm. So many memories of being choked out <clears throat> in an old station wagon with the windows closed by my parents. <laughs> oh, man. If you grew up in that time frame, you know what I'm talking about. It's all for just having one that works. That's all. That's all. I just wanted one that works. And uh, the original one, not so good. Okay, well, and when you pull this out, the whole socket shouldn't go with it. If it does, you fucked up. Okay, thank you for watching. Now we have a working cigarette lighter.